Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, I haven't made a video in about two weeks because uh, last week I barely got anything to show off. So uh, this week uh, I'm going to make a pretty big video now. Uh, I have a lot to mention and uh, hope it will be interesting. So uh, yesterday I went ahead and picked up more computer stuff such as a Dell Dimension 2400 right here. Um, yeah, I can read the specs in there if you want. Uh, it's pretty standard. Well, 2400 is barely sell for anything. I was very surprised when I found this because most of the drives are neither of the drives are jammed. I've had an epidemic of drive jamming, and I've been trying to use these little where I put them. I don't know, but I've been trying to use rubber bands to uh, that I bought to repair the drives, but I found that even those don't work. I found that uh, it works for like one use and then it doesn't work anymore. So, uh, um, also with this computer. Uh, yeah, someone chucked it. It was fully functional, had a hard drive in it, and everything it had an 80 gigabyte hard drive in it. But you know, it's a little bit big for 2400, which I can barely make 30 bucks off of. Um, so I put a 40 gig in it. I put one of these hard drives in. I mentioned it in my last video. So yeah, that's that. Also, got another 2400. But um, where the heck did it go? Oh, the case is down here. It was only a case, a siding, and a power button bouncing around in the. CD rewritable drive, so I went ahead and uh, took that stuff out. I'm just going to leave the case there until I find a motherboard for it, which I might never, but you know. Um, and uh, the, this is one of the best finds I've ever found, by the way. I'll mention it right now. It's a uh, HP Pavilion Slimline S5000. Uh, I found this. It was thrown out. It was fully functional. No dead parts, nothing. It's it even had some of the plastic um, covering on the front here that I peeled off. It's in like it's in like new condition as well. Uh, someone throwing it out. It's got a three gigahertz AMD Athlon 2 X2 dual core CPU, four gigs of DDR3 RAM, um, which is only running at 1066. I looked at the uh, I looked at the documentation of this thing of the motherboard online, and I found that um, it says there that it takes 1333 megahertz RAM, but I put 1333 in and did not run at that. They only ran at 1066, so I guess the documentation was wrong. Because apparently other people found some other inconsistencies with that same documentation, so, you know. But, um, yeah, it's got, I believe, a 640 or 50 gigabyte hard drive. It might just be 600 gigabyte. I should know that by now. But it's like a 600 gig SATA, 3 gigabytes a second hard drive, I think. Um, and originally I thought that I was going to go ahead and take this thing and, um, and take the motherboard out of it and make a gaming machine out of it because you know, DR3 RAM I thought would have PCI Express 2.0 by 16, but it ends up it's got a PCI Express by 16 slot, so you know it doesn't support any amazingly good video cards. So you know I can make $300 off this based off of what I've looked at on eBay and these things and this model's past selling history. So you know I'm happy I guess I didn't have to add anything to it. It's got to put some work into it and I get $300 out of it. About. Um, I really, really, really would like to make a gaming machine out of it, but uh, yeah, again, it's small form factor, so I have to use a different case. And on top of that, it doesn't support PCI Express 2.0. And uh, yesterday, today is Sunday, but yesterday my friend, my, I had my friend over. I actually had multiple friends over, but I had one friend. I'm thinking of starting a business with him. He's uh, he knows a lot about networking and software and stuff, and I've got my computer business. Uh, where I, I basically only sell stuff, I sell most of those things. And uh, he has a lot more knowledge when it comes to software and networking. And he seems to have a lot more people that he uh, fixes computers for. He seems to know a lot more people, I mean. I won't be wrong about that. But he, uh, he and I think are going to do conjoined forces and um, start doing a lot of work, uh, like repair jobs and stuff, going out and fixing people's PCs. So uh, I'm hoping to start that up. And I was at a, a computer store uh, three or four days ago, and uh, I was one of the local computer stores around, and uh, I noticed that they're selling Dell Dimension 8200s and things of that sort for $100 a piece. I don't even know why I'm putting the camera up there, so I'm going to talk about that in a second. But um, I noticed that they were selling Dell Dimension 8200s for $100 a piece, whereas I make about $35 or $30 off of a good sale, like a lucky sale online, I'll make $35 off of. Okay, and that's if I'm really lucky. Usually I only make 25 or 30. And I'm thinking that selling locally, I'll be able to make a lot more money because I won't have to. People won't have to factor in shipping, so they'll be willing to pay more.
for the item and more of the items selling price will go directly to me. There won't be any fees or anything. So, you know, I might be able to make three times as much money off each of these things if I sell them locally. The problem is, the demand for these things locally is next to zero. Like, if I were to post on Craigslist, I tried posting that computer right there, the Dell Dimension 3000 behind there, on Craigslist a year ago. In fact, that computer's been sitting there for about a year. I just haven't been, I've just been too lazy to move it back. But, back here, I mean. But, uh, you know, I don't think Craigslist is doing anything. I, mean, I, I don't think anyone's interested in anything on Craigslist. It's not a very good place to sell anyway. But, you know, I don't have a storefront. I'm just a 16-year-old in an old uh, horse stable that's been renovated. So, not really a whole lot of uh, opportunity there when it comes to selling locally. So, I think I'm just going to have to suck it up and keep selling online and stuff, even though I could make three times as much money if you sale. But, yeah. Um... What else? I was going to talk about what a friend and I did. Um, he was over and was looking at stuff, and he n mentioned how I had like a, I think it's like a 16 port switch up there below that router. And he mentioned how that is quite inefficient, and it is quite inefficient. And um, he decided he'd take it out. So I took the switch out, and here's the router. Um, I have to kind of describe how the network works here. Um, at the house, which is way down in that direction, um, the internet comes in, we have DSL, and it comes in through a, it goes into a modem slash router thing from AT&T. Okay, it comes out of the router, goes, and goes to three different places. It goes to the upstairs of the house, it goes to uh, the downstairs of the house, and it goes to out here. Now, um, sometimes there's a conflict when you have a router plugged in directly to the back of a router. That creates an IP address conflict and it basically crashes the entire network, which is exactly what happened when we were working on it yesterday. So, we had to go inside, go down the basement, um, and we changed the default IP address of the router inside. Then we came out here and um, even though the IP address system was set differently, it still wasn't working. And the reason was, we found out later, because we had the wrong Ethernet cable plugged in. The Ethernet setup in this building is kind of confusing. The Ethernet actually comes in right through there, right through that little pipe right there, and uh, it goes to the router. We plugged it into the wrong um, cable, because there's the cable that goes up into the ceiling. We figured that might have been it, because we thought that we were getting connection from that before. Um, and that cable actually goes over to that computer. But we thought that was the input, so we came back out, we thought it still wasn't working, and so we went back inside and changed the IP address of the router inside, and then finally figured out our mistake, and then changed the IP address of this one. So it, it took like an hour to get things working, um, but we finally got that all working. We also removed a switch from inside that wasn't doing it. We had a switch behind the router down the basement inside, which was completely unnecessary, because we were having, it was one input going to the switch and like three outputs, so we just you know, got rid of that. Um, and it seemed yesterday, though, that a cable that runs across here goes down that post right there, and it goes to the computer over there. Uh, it seemed that that cable stopped working, so my friend ran out of new cable, um, temporarily. It's not stapled in or anything up there. Ran it to a switch so we could um, extend it because we didn't have like Ethernet cable long enough, and ran across the floor here up the back of the table and uh, into here because uh, we were having network problems over here with this computer and uh, it seemed to solve the problem until this morning when I came out. I'm actually thankful that the old setup works, the old cable that goes over here works because um, you know I didn't want to have to pull out the old cable and, and uh, use a cable staples to put the new one up. But the old cable is working absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take down the temporary wire. I'm gonna, probably going to put that switch Right, I'm probably going to mount it on the table. Might use some Velcro or something to keep it in place. So I can have two computers on the network at the same time. Uh, wow, I'm almost 10 minutes into this video. I still have a lot to say. Uh, actually, I'm going to mention something really quick. Um, now, when I was at that computer store a while ago, I noticed that they had loaded OpenOffice. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a, uh, it's like a free version of Microsoft Office, except it's, uh, obviously not by Microsoft. But they had that loaded in all their computers, and I thought that might be a good selling point. So I'm, what I'm about to do is I'm about to load OpenOffice on this computer. Um, I don't know if it'll help the sale, the sale price, but it might, you know, it can't hurt really. Worst case scenario is, you know, it 
doesn't really increase the uh, selling price and just you know, increase the amount of time I spend working on it, but you know, it might be worth it. Uh, that's that. Um, yesterday, actually, I also got a bunch of computers I scrapped. I got, wow, was it really? yeah, I guess it was four computers I scrapped yesterday. Um, got a lot of motherboards and everything out of them. And uh, I got this Lenovo. It has a 700 megahertz Celeron and uh, some RAM in it, but the problem is, it's a hard drive, but the problem is it's beat up, the hinge is broken, the cover doesn't close properly, the CD drive is jammed like crazy, it's like someone super glued or something, so, not that, not that someone did, but you know, it seems that way, so I'm just going to get rid of this, I don't even want it, um, but my friend, when he was over yesterday, he took, I offered to pay him to test out all the routers I had, because, you know, some of you might have seen my other videos might have noticed I had tons of routers sitting up there because I mentioned them multiple times before. I gave them all to him. Um, he told me some of them weren't really worth anything since they were older and I'm going to throw those out. But he took about 15 or 20 routers and switches and he's going to test them all out. I'm going to pay him maybe 20 bucks for testing them all out depending on how long it takes. If it takes him a long time, I'm going to trust that he doesn't really waste the time with it. But if it only takes a minute or two to test and reset each one, I'm going to pay him about $20 for doing all of them. Uh, maybe more, I'm not sure, but yeah, they might be able to sell them. Okay, I'm just mentioning things completely randomly. Um, this computer over here, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but um, but this computer had this NVIDIA GeForce 9800 GTX Plus in it until this video card started getting a common issue with it where it gets cold solder joints and there are red squares all over the, the uh, screen whenever it gets video output or red lines all over the place and uh, I'm gonna fix it by popping it in the oven sometime soon but um, but yeah it it, it, it died so I, I put my other NVIDIA GeForce 9800 GTX Plus which is the same exact model as that one in here it was originally for my 2009 gaming PC over there in there and it works fine now uh, yeah let's uh, put a quick mention to that also months ago I got this Xbox 360 Halo 3 edition from, it's actually from late 2007. Um, and I finally got a power supply for it yesterday. I randomly found an Xbox power supply and video cables lying around. Uh, so I took them and I tested it out. And I noticed that it didn't give the red ring of death at first. But then once I plugged in the video cables and I tested it out re regardless of whether I have HDMI or um, the uh, normal video cables plugged into it, it gives. Um, because I believe it is this quadrant is red. It just blinks red. So um, I found out that the error code, because it gives video output, is that the error code was E73, I think it was. Um, apparently that means there's something wrong with the Ethernet part of the motherboard. Which means that, um, well, it doesn't mean anything necessarily, but uh, apparently that can be caused by bad solder joints or something regardless of whether or not the Ethernet's actually plugged in. Apparently it completely keeps the thing from even being able to start up, so... Um, so yeah, also I saw somewhere else that it could be the DVD drive connections and stuff, but I don't think that's really going to be the problem. And um, some people's solution to this problem is to... Uh, I looked up online, it's the beauty of the vast knowledge of Xbox users. Yeah, just kidding, I don't really have anything as Xbox users that much, but... Um, the most common fix I found online was to jam something into the fi both of the fans, okay, so the fans can't spin, let the console overheat and begin to damage itself until it starts to work again. Apparently that works, but I'm not going to jam paper clips into the back of the fans and make them overheat, because it's just stupid. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to refill the solder. I bought a, a, a heat gun, which is basically like a super powerful hair dryer, if you will. Oh, that can output like a thousand degree air. So, um, I'm going to use that to ref. I mean, I bought it online. It's probably going to be here later this week in about five or six days, probably. But I'm going to use that to reflow the solder on this board, hopefully, get it to work. And also, to while I'm at it, fix the, this video card. Because I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that um, this thing's solder needs to be reflowed because that's a very common issue. Uh, geez, I had a lot to mention. Uh, I can't remember what else I have to say. Uh, well, I've been talking for 15 minutes now. 
Um, it's still a mess in here. I need more hard drives. I need some SATA hard drives. I need a drive for this 9100. I need a SATA hard drive for this Gateway 550GR. Uh, I don't know. Stuff. This is the Ethernet port that was in our Ethernet. You know what I mean? Switch. That was uh, up there. It takes uh, AC 120 volt, which is the same po uh, power cable as a computer power cable. Sorry, I'm stumbling over my words right now for no reason. But yeah, 16 port switch. Technically, it's only 15 because one of these has to be an input. It doesn't the one thing I like about switches is that it doesn't matter which one you plug the input into. Um, you can plug the input here, or here, or whatever, and it still gives output to all the rest. So yeah, I got rid of that. I think that might have solved the problem where, um, I don't think I've ever really mentioned this, but on all the computers I set up, I have, to, I have to turn down the link speed and duplex mode to 10 megabits per second from 100, typically, to, uh, to get the internet to work. I think taking this thing out of the network might have fixed that problem. Uh, man, what else? I'm trying to ramp up my business. Oh yes, I forgot to mention this. I'll probably put this in, in the description too. Um, I have a Facebook page for my business. Um, my official business name I think I'm going to go by is Rainville Computer Solutions. Um, Rainville because Rainville is my last name. Um, but my Facebook page is called Rainville Computers, which I might want to change. And I don't think I can change the Facebook page name, which annoys me. But... Um, I noticed that I have about five likes on that page, and uh, I really want to use that page as a mode for people to learn about the existence the existence of my business and to buy from me directly because I can make a lot more money that way and it's easier for me and it's easier for the buyers since they don't have to pay for shipping or anything. And I, I want it to be a way to reach out to customers. Problem is on Facebook, most of my friends are 16 and 17 year old high school kids, so you know they're they're not really going to be interested in that. So I'm thinking, you know. Anyone who wants to can go ahead and uh, like that page, I guess. But most of you guys won't be living anywhere near me, so it won't really make a difference. But I mean, it would help to get some traffic through that page. So I think I'll post a link in the, in, the in the description. If you don't see it, just search on Facebook for Rainville Computers, and you'll find the page. Um, because I'm really, really thinking about how I should ramp up the local selling and stuff. I barely do any repair jobs, which is unfortunate. You know, 95% of my income, if not more, comes from just selling stuff online. So, I want to change that. I want to, I want to do local repair jobs. And I want to sell to people locally. So, um, so yeah, I've talked about that enough for now. Um, I think that's gonna be pretty much it for the, for this video. I can't really think of anything more. Uh, I don't think it's that messy in here compared to what it was like earlier today. Yesterday, my brother had a, another lawnmower in here. It was a craftsman. Um, until he found two dead ma mice in it in a mouse nest. So he rolled it outside and took them all out of it. And he's been trying to diagnose some stuff. Um, so that's no longer in here. And I had tons of crap stacked near the door yesterday. All the stuff that I already scrapped and everything, I took that out of here. And, um, yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, well, I haven't put much effort towards it, but I'm going to try to clean this place up a little bit and get it to be a little bit nicer. And, um, yeah. I've been thinking about this Xbox, though. I think it'd be really nice to have an Xbox set up here. I already have one Xbox, but I, th I think it'd be really nice to have an Xbox, like, right about there, maybe around here, along with the NES and the GameCube, um, to use here, so I can, mainly so we can watch Netflix and stuff on it. Not really as much for gaming. But, um, thing is, yeah, this is from late 2007, and it does not have a hard drive in it, and I don't have any memory cards for it, and I only own one Xbox controller that is with my other Xbox. So, I'm probably going to have to buy a hard drive for it and a controller, but that can't, you know, that shouldn't cost too much. I don't even really, really need that big of a hard drive for it, maybe like a 120 gig at most, because, you know, I'm only really going to be, uh, you know, storing apps on I'm not really play, playing that many games. If I do get it working, that is. Uh, I was going to mention something else. Right. Over here, I used to have a Blu-ray player from 2007, but it's still pretty good. Um, until I took that into the house, because, uh, you know, this is an analog crappy TV. So I took the Blu-ray player inside the house and put a DVD player out here. 
because, you know, like I just said, there's no point in playing Blu-rays in this analog TV. Um, and, uh, yeah, this DVD player works fine. Uh, online, I convinced my parents to buy a new video control center. I forget the model of it, model number of it and stuff, but it's, it was like a $250 um, audio and video control center that was that supported 5.1 channel surround sound. It had HDMI and everything on it. It had, you know, all, all the video connectors, composite, S video component, uh, HDMI of course, all that good stuff. And um, that was originally going to be delivered Friday, the day after I ordered. It. I paid for four day shipping. I think, which I think was no, it wasn't free, but uh, yeah, four day shipping. And I checked the tracking number, and I was really surprised. When I found out that it was out for delivery the day after it went out for shipping on Friday. But problem is, I didn't know that it needed to be signed for, so no one was home. Actually, my brother and my friend were home, but they were out in the backyard messing with uh, the lawn tractor. So, uh, UPS guy came, and uh, he came with a package, and he left with a package, since there was no one to sign for it. And because of that, I have to wait an entire weekend to get the thing delivered. Um, I really think that's, you know, I mean, at some point getting angry over it, or getting upset, but, um, it is, it's, it's a real bummer how I paid for one, or four day shipping, amazingly got one day shipping out of it, and then ended up having to wait three more days because no one was there to sign for it. I don't know. No use complaining. I also have this Blu-ray player that was sitting on top of that rack for the longest time. I finally got around to testing it out. It's got, um, Netflix and YouTube and everything built in since from late 2009. But I found that it gives absolutely no power output. You, you plug it in and it's no power output. You try turning it on, nothing happens. So uh, that's kind of unfortunate. So I might take it apart or look it up online and try to see what I can do with it. But I'm kind of neck deep in projects right now. In fact, right now, my brother and one of my friends are working on mounting a 10 horsepower engine on a go kart we bought. So yeah, we're all busy. Uh, I really can't think of anything more to mention right now. I think that's going to be it for this video. One little thing, it's not really technology related, but I got this air filter over a year ago. I found out that I'm supposed to replace the filter to it every three months. Um, I just replaced the filter to it a couple weeks ago. So we about, went about 13 months without our air filter replacement, but, you know, whatever. I think it's a little small for this room. I doubt that it will really do much of anything, but, you know, it's better than nothing, so it does get dust in here. Wow, look at all these CPUs. All these are going to be scrapped. Slot CPUs, RAM, all those hard drives stacked up. All these floppy drives, which you can't really see. All these power supplies. All these old CD drives. You know, I really got to uh, talk to my, um, I don't know what to call him. He's, he's a guy who runs a business in New York who, uh, buy his computer scrap from me. I gotta talk to him again see when he's coming out my way again because I really gotta sell all this stuff for way too much of it. Okay, I've, re I've reached that critical point in the video which I am just talking about random pointless things. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, gonna go ahead and stop the video now. Uh, that'll be it. 24 minute long video. I know, pretty long. At least that's what this video is almost at right now. But, uh, I don't know. Thanks for watching as usual. Uh, I'm not going to beg anyone to like, comment, or subscribe because people who want to do that do it on their own time. Um, like my Facebook page if you want to. You don't have to or anything because it doesn't really matter either way. But uh, yeah, as usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.